What are enzymes? Most enzymes are proteins. Proteins are polypeptides made up of amino acids. The polypeptides fold into secondary structures such as alpha helices and beta sheets. These secondary structures then fold into the protein's tertiary structure. The tertiary structure of a protein is important for its function as an enzyme. When a protein unfolds, this structure is lost and the protein is no longer active. Specific regions of the enzyme molecule bind other molecules called substrates. Substrates are the molecules that react. In this example, glucose and ATP are the enzyme's substrates, and the enzyme is hexokinase. How do enzymes work? Enzymes catalyze reactions by lowering the activation energy. How do they lower the activation energy? Enzymes are relatively large molecules. They form many contact points with their substrates. The formation of the enzyme substrate complex is the first step in an enzyme catalyzed reaction. The enzyme holds the substrate in the proper orientation for a reaction to occur. It places the substrate near specific amino acids and cofactors that help it react. The contact points or binding interactions between the enzyme and the substrate result from hydrogen bonds, van der Waals interactions, and ionic interactions. More enzyme substrate binding interactions form once the substrate has started to react. This occurs at the top of the hill and is called an activated complex or transition state. When an enzyme binds a substrate, energy is released. The binding energy lowers the activation energy. Because the hill is lower, the reaction occurs more quickly. Enzymes bind substrates and convert them to products. During the reaction, the enzymes are not changed. One enzyme can convert many substrate molecules into products. Now that we know what enzymes are and what they do, let's learn more about how they do it. Enzymes are very selective in the types of reactions they catalyze and the types of substrates they act on. Let's explore this concept of specificity by examining a biological process in which enzymes play a critical role, the pathway called glycolysis. Glycolysis is a series of 10 reactions that convert glucose to pyruvate. Pyruvate is an intermediate formed when glucose is metabolized to carbon dioxide and water. How do enzymes in this metabolic pathway know which reactions to catalyze? Let's focus on the first reaction in the glycolysis pathway. The enzyme hexokinase adds a phosphate to glucose. It doesn't add the phosphate just anywhere. It specifically adds it to the C6-hydroxyl. Other enzymes exist that phosphorylate the other hydroxyl groups. Hexokinase adds the phosphate to the C6-hydroxyl because of the way the enzyme specifically binds the glucose molecule. Hexokinase can't phosphorylate glucose directly because the free energy change is positive, so it couples glucose phosphorylation to ATP hydrolysis. To couple these reactions, hexokinase has a binding site for ATP and another for glucose. This is the enzyme's active site where catalysis occurs. Catalysis is the change in the reaction rate by a catalyst. Because ATP hydrolysis is spontaneous, it doesn't need the glucose in order to react. It can react with water to form ADP. Water is smaller than glucose and easily enters the active site. Reacting ATP with water is like setting dollar bills on fire. You get a little bit of heat, but nothing else. Hexokinase must specifically catalyze the reaction of ATP with glucose and no other molecule. How does this occur? Hexokinase binds ATP only after glucose binds. This prevents the enzyme from catalyzing the reaction of ATP with water. The enzyme changes its shape after glucose binds. This is called induced fit. 
The shape change promotes ATP binding, thereby improving the enzymatic activity. The many points of contact between the enzyme and its substrate also ensure specificity. Molecules with slightly different shapes won't fit into the active site as well as the substrate. This reduces the ability of the substrate to interact with the enzyme and the activation energy remains high. Often an enzyme can't do its job alone. Molecules called cofactors are needed. A cofactor is a molecule required for the action of certain enzymes. Cofactors may be inorganic ions such as iron or magnesium. The enzyme hexokinase requires a magnesium ion as a cofactor. Magnesium ions function to shield the negatively charged groups of ATP and facilitate the reaction with glucose. Coenzymes are also cofactors. A coenzyme is an organic molecule often derived from vitamins. Unlike an enzyme, a coenzyme may be modified in a reaction. The coenzymes NAD and NADP carry hydride ions in oxidation reduction reactions. A hydride ion is equivalent to a proton and two electrons. Enzymes are the world's best catalysts. Industrial catalysts speed up reactions by three to five orders of magnitude. They often require high temperatures and they aren't very specific. Biological catalysts increase reaction rates by nine to fifteen orders of magnitude. They work at room temperature and are extremely specific. In the next section, we'll learn more about reaction rates when we discuss enzyme kinetics.